Hello everyone. Welcome to Remote Ready with Poll Everywhere. Hope you're having a good start to your week. We're going to get started in just a couple moments. I'm going to let everyone join. It's great to see you all. All right. Let's get started. I'm going to have the two hosts today introduce themselves and take it over from here. Hi everyone, I'm Courtney. I'm the marketing manager here at Poll Everywhere. Um, I'm, I've been a California resident for over a decade and I am a big believer in vinyl records and hardcover books. And then my co-presenter today is um, Alex Gershon, who's our senior product manager. Hi, boy. Uh, as Courtney said, I am Alex Gershon, I'm a senior project manager here, product manager at uh, Poll Everywhere. Uh, I've lived in seven cities since 2011, so I'm very passionate about both moving and building furniture. And I look forward to talking with everyone today about how to best leverage pull everywhere uh, with your remote workforce. Awesome, thanks, Alex. So I'm gonna start the first part, portion of this webinar um, and go a little bit over what we'll cover today. So today we'll cover what you need to get started hosting your online presentations and meetings, um, tips for engaging your participants virtually, and then we'll dive into a few different Pull Everywhere workflows you can utilize um, in your next presentation or meeting, and then we'll end with a Q&A. A quick note before we get started, if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about or covered in this webinar, um, throughout the webinar, you can um, drop them into the Zoom Q&A, and then we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Um, so go ahead and open up a browser tab on your phone or computer and head over to pullev.com slash web demo. Um, and we'd like you to answer the first question here to kind of like get everything started um, to see how confident you are about presenting and or hosting and meeting remotely. So we'll give everyone a couple minutes to respond to that um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So it looks like everyone's like kind of mostly confident. Um, we've got mostly everyone like in the light green smiley face. Um, we've got some that are super confident and then a couple that are less confident. Um, no matter how confident you are, um, we'll be able to provide you with some ideas of how to add pull everywhere and then also some tips and tricks of presenting um, remotely. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started with the first thing. So that is our our presentation checklist. Um, so this is a checklist that we put together with some tips of things if whether it's your first or 50th time kind of hosting remotely, um, some of the things to keep in mind. So first is your video conferencing software. This is a given, um, but you should consider all your options. Where does your team already work from? Um, Slack offers Slack calls with screen sharing now. There's also Google Hangouts. Um, and then also, as you can see here, our favorite is Zoom, which we host our uh, meetings and also our webinars on. Um, and then once you choose, especially if it's new software, take the time to uh, walk yourself through the product, practice running a meeting, and then test it out um, at a smaller meeting to make sure everything works and you understand the settings and you kind of, so everything will run seamlessly when you um, host at a larger meeting. Um, and then when you're hosting remote, uh, hosting a remote meeting for the first time, you'll kind of want to decide, um, decide on some meeting etiquette um, for the attendees and for the hosts. Um, do you want people to chime in and ask questions whenever they have them? Or do you want to have a Q&A at the end? Um, another question you should ask and kind of set that expectation is, should attendees um, mute themselves upon entering? Um, in some softwares, um, I know Zoom does this, you can mute you as the uh, host can mute uh, attendees upon entering too. Um, or do you want to have them have their video on and off when they enter? It just depends on um, your company or your meeting and how you like to set things up. Uh, next, you want to be clear about the goal of the meeting and set an agenda to review throughout. This will help keep your meeting on track and everyone involved um, while everyone is um, remote. Um, and then additionally, take notes, preferably where that agenda is. This way everyone can see what next steps are and what was discussed in case they do miss the meeting. It is documented. Um, lastly, and uh, I'm 
mentioned Q&A earlier, and I will mention again on the next slide, Q&A is crucial for remote meetings and presentations. You're not all in the same room, so capturing people's attention um, and also opinions and questions is harder in a distributed setting, and having to, um, dedicated time for a Q&A is really important. Um, so let's move on to some ways that you can engage your teammates uh, in meeting attendees virtually. Um, a big one is, while we're all remote right now, um, to celebrate wins as often as you do in the office. This is super important for team building as well um, as just overall employee engagement. It can be as simple as posting a message in your group chat, or you can host a 15 minute celebratory call to all virtually high five and cheer about um, some big accomplishment or some big goal that was hit. Um, you can still do that remotely even if you guys aren't in the office. Um, next, you can host a weekly hangout hour with your team to just chat and catch up, no agenda required, um, just to check in with everyone. Um, you can also have it themed or you could host a, a trivia competition remotely. Um, our competitions activity is really great for that and we've done that in the past and it really gets everyone really excited and involved in that hangout. Um, and then also, um, if you're used to asking for a show of hands, um, you can use a multiple choice activity that we have um, to get a virtual show of hands and get an accurate count for each option um, so that when you can still get everyone's opinion um, on things, whether or not they're in the office. Um, and then also one thing that is really helpful is hosting a daily check-in. It can be either async in a chat uh, in a chat client or via video conferencing to help get everyone on the same page for the day and work through any blockers or questions people may have on a project. Um, and then lastly, don't forget to include opportunities for people to ask questions to, prov um, to provide feedback. Our Q&A, uh, uh, the Pull Everywhere Q&A is really awesome for that. Um, we use it all the time, even in a smaller meeting of 10, but we use it in much larger meeting settings as well. Um, so those are some tips and a checklist to kind of help you get you started. Um, now I'm going to pass it off to our senior product manager, Alex, who's going to walk you through a few of the workflows for corporate and for education. So Alex, do you want to take it away? I will. Thank you very much, Courtney. Um, a lot of great information there. I just want to drive home that remote meetings, remote work is a lot more difficult than I expected. So everyone by being part of this meeting is really taking the right step forward in allowing your company to be more engaged and more enabled as everyone is remote and as everyone tries to adjust to their new workplace. Myself went from a really awesome office to my hallway. Big change, not great. However, there are ways in which to make sure that everyone, regardless of their environment, is engaged. And I want to go through three of those. And before going through them, I want to say that I will not be going inside of our product to demo these. If you wish to see how that is done, every other Thursday we do have a webinar with respect to the, the basics of uh, Pull Everywhere. So definitely sign up for that. We will have a slide on that uh, later on in this presentation. The first thing that I want to cover is hosting a remote AMA. This can be great for a few reasons. Say you want to have your C-level executives talk to the company about how they feel about the remote workforce and get their active feedback. Or as mentioned before, you're having a team happy hour and you want to spice things up with a competition. Uh, you want to have open-ended questions to see if your team has any concerns about the future of the company, the future of remote work, so on and so forth. All of these can be accomplished uh, through various activities within Poll Everywhere. So what you first want to do is, is you have uh, two options. Uh, number one, you can skip registration and just have everyone respond anonymously. You know, this is great if you know your team and you just want to have as least friction as possible. Another option is registration. Say you want to be able to track everyone's input, everyone's questions, so on and so forth, you can register them. You can either do this via a link, you can manually input it, you can upload a CSV file, or you can have the individuals register the day of the presentation and make it so they cannot enter the presentation until they have registered. After that, you go about creating your activity, and once you have done that, you can leverage one of our three plugins for PowerPoint, Slides, and Keynote to have this activity embedded in your presentation as you have just seen as we did with the smiley faces. 
after the presentation is complete and you want to be able to look at a high level what is going on with the company and have actionable items from that, you have the ability to create these executive summary reports that really take all of the questions, all of the responses at a very high level, like I said, and provide your C-level team a quick 30 second digest and uh, things of that nature. Uh, moving on to the next, for all of our friends in education, we have stuff for you as well. Everyone in education is now working remotely and you have the issue in keeping your class engaged. People might be looking at the screen, but how you know that they are engaging with the screen. We have a lot of activities to help you with that. Once again, competitions can be used as a fun way to see if everyone's understanding the, uh, the, the um, uh, material. Multiple choice can be used to actually have quizzes that you're allowed to, to grade and update. And also Q and A's can be used during chapter reviews to see if people are understanding the material and also to give everyone a chance to ask questions. Not everyone feels comfortable raising their hand in class if they're very shy. And this gives an equal voice to everyone. So it's a great activity for that. So now with respect to how to get your students into Poll Everywhere, you once again have a few options. We do have an LMS integration with Blackboard, Canvas, and a few others. Uh, if you go to our plans page, polleverywhere.com slash plans, you'll be able to see which offerings have this. So you can import your students through our LMS connector. You can manually type them within your Poll Everywhere account, or you can upload a CSV file with all of your students so that all of the proper students are registered for the, for the right classes and no one's taking a quiz that they're not supposed to take. After that, you've got the activities that I previously mentioned. And then once again, insert those into your plugin for PowerPoint, slides, or Keynote, all of which are on the homepage of our website and are also within your My Pulse page. So multiple areas in which to download that plugin. And what's very cool, about how we help education is just like we provided that executive summary to corporate, to the AMA that we discussed on the previous slide. With education, you're able to track who gets what right and wrong in a grade book, which allows you to uh, have a more virtual aspect of grading. And say it's a Q&A and you just wanna see high level questions, you can also leverage the executive summary. That is not just for corporate, that can also be used for education. Now moving on to the last little bit here. If you're with us about two weeks ago, I gave a webinar on uh, shared activities in Teams. What this is, is that uh, say you are a corporate trainer and you've got six different teams spread all across the, the country and they each train a different sales department. And you do not want to have any crossover here. You want to be able to have each team uh, tracked very easily and also have the ability to share the activities they create with one another, either to maintain consistency or to cut down on the time spent building activities, both amongst your team as well as amongst yourself. Shared activities allows you to do that. If you want to deeper dive into this, we have the webinar that I presented about two weeks ago live on our blog. So please go there and watch it. It's extremely informative and I make a few really bad dad jokes. So don't miss it. And the last two things I want to talk about, as I've mentioned, we have a plugin with PowerPoint, Keynote and slides. What this allows you to do is to directly take the activities you create in the Pull Everywhere website and insert them into your PowerPoint slides, Google slides, so on and so forth. So it makes that process much more seamless and direct. We also have a Slack integration. If you just want a very basic multiple choice quiz or a multiple choice questionnaire or Q and A, we have the plugin and it's a very quick and easy way to get immediate feedback from your team. So with that, I'll pass it back to Courtney. Thanks, Alex. 
so we've got one more uh, question for you all, and then we'll go ahead and um, wrap up. And then we've got plenty of time for Q&A, and there's a lot of great questions coming in, which Alex and I will answer in just a few minutes. So feel free to keep dropping them into uh, the Zoom Q&A, and we'll get to them. Um, but let's see how this poll is doing first. So what are you guys most interested in trying out today? Um, one of the virtual engagement tips, hosting a remote AMA. When AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, it's um, basically a Q&A session. I saw some questions about that. Um, and then presenting a virtual lecture or uh, integrating Poll Everywhere into a Slyware software. Um, looks like that most people, it's almost a three-way tie before between one of the virtual engagement tips, presenting a virtual lecture, and integrating Poll Everywhere into Slyware. Um, you can try all of those three at once to after this webinar today. Um, awesome. So um, let's go ahead. And as Alex mentioned earlier, there is um, every other Thursday, and now uh, we host a getting started webinar. So if you're interested in the basics, um, but a lot of the things we talked about today um, in, are included in our advanced basic webinar, which uh, starts um, every other Thursday at one o'clock um, and that starts this Thursday. So if you're interested in joining and wanting to see like a hands-on um, demo of some of the things that Alex talked about, um, I recommend that you guys go ahead and register at pulleverywhere.com slash webinars and we'll also include a link um, in a follow-up email to this webinar. Um, you guys can learn about registering participants, um, our slideware integrations, um, all of our account settings and moderation and reporting and also learn more about shared activities. Awesome. Um, so also, if you ever have any questions um, while you're using the product or something's just not working right, um, please reach out to our awesome support team. Uh, they're, they're available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Monday through Friday, and you can reach them at support at Pull Everywhere. And depending on what plan you're on, you may also have phone support. So they're available by phone um, for some of our plans. Um, but we also have a ton of support articles and guides on our site as well, which you have access to at any time. Awesome. Um, so thanks so much everyone for, answer, um, for submitting so many questions. Um, we're gonna start to go through them. Um, so feel free to keep adding them um, if something comes up as we're going through them. Um, so I've seen a few questions so far um, about using Pull Everywhere and Zoom at the same time. Um, so as you saw today that we did that, um, and then how do you do that? What are some tips? Um, so um, I can start and then Alex, feel free to uh, chime in if you want to add anything. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I definitely recommend how we did, our, how we used to pull everywhere today in our presentation is we have the Google Slides um, integration into our Google, this is our Google Slide presentation and we integrated uh, pull everywhere for Google Slides and directly inserted our couple of polls into our slide decks that we didn't have to go between windows and it just automatically activated when we got to that slide and you can put it um, wherever you want in your presentation and as you saw we had more than one um, and so you can I definitely highly recommend if you're going to be presenting within zoom or any other video conferencing software to download our either for PowerPoint for keynote or for Google slides awesome um, and then there was another quick question is if um, you record your session, will the polls be recorded as well? Um, if you have them on the screen sharing, whatever's shared on the screen um, while you're presenting um, and recording, it will record it as well. Um, Alex, do you want to take a couple questions about participants and registering them? Yes, I, let me open up the Q&A here. Yeah, so there's one why, question. Oh yeah. um, Why register participants? Uh, that's a, a great question. Uh, a few reasons why. Say you want to be able to track participation, uh, be it if you're in education amongst your class or if you're at a company amongst your coworkers. Registration will allow you to do that. It'll allow you to see who asked what question. And another reason to have people register is because of moderation. Say there's a fear that you're having a Q&A with the CEO and it's a thousand person company spread across multiple locations and you want to make sure that all the questions are on point and no one's taking this in a jovial manner and they're taking this very seriously. Uh, having, having registration will help call that and what will also help call that is we do have a moderation feature that cuts back on curse words, emoticons, and if you have the Teams feature that I discussed earlier, 
Uh, this will allow one of your team members to actively monitor the Q&A to make sure that any of those nefarious people, if you will, aren't able to have an awkward question or an inappropriate question appear on the Q&A. Awesome, thank you, Alex. Um, there was another question here about um, why can't pull of integrate right into Zoom versus a separate web page or a device to respond? Um, so if you're not present, you can, um, there's a couple of different things here. If you're not presenting or um, we don't have a Zoom integration, we do have it in the slide words though, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, so one thing is you can have, um, there's something called a shareable response link. So you can create a poll and send a link out to participants either in the Zoom chat or um, in your other chat client or in email and people can respond to a poll without it, um, without you also presenting it um, or having it active at the time. Um, you can also have a poll running in the background um, without uh, in a web browser without having to have it in your presentation as well. And then you just would share that browser into Zoom and so you don't have to have a presentation going to also be able to present pull up. Great, and I, I have the uh, next then, one uh, about competitions. Uh, that's a great awesome. question, expanding upon the concept of what are competitions and how they work. We have a specific activity called competitions and what it allows you to do is to create a uh, multi-question, multi-choice uh, uh, quiz show, if you will. So you'll have one question with multiple responses, one of them is correct. Everyone attempts to type in uh, the proper answer. And they're not only graded on selecting the proper answer, they can also be graded on how quickly they respond. So you can set as many questions as you want with as many answers as you want for each question. And the, uh, the competitors, if you will, will be able to track who is in first place, second place, third place, so on and so forth as the game progresses. So you'll be able to really drive that competitive spirit amongst your team or amongst whomever you play uh, this game with, which I've been using with my friends during virtual happy hours just to sort of have something to do. Awesome, there's a couple other questions around this topic, so we'll tackle those as well. Um, so one is, what tool and app are you using for weekly Hangouts? Um, Zoom is pretty awesome for that. Uh, there's a, when everyone's sharing their video, there's something called the gallery view. So you can see everyone at once, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, we really like that. There's also, you can have a little fun with the weekly hangouts. There's virtual backgrounds now with Zoom. So people can like, look like they're in space or in a garden or something. Um, so that's pretty great. Uh, and then there's another question about, we're looking for more ways to engage, have fun, um, slash have fun with our now remote workforce. Are there any games, quizzes, et cetera, we can play with all of our employees virtually po via poll of. Um, I highly recommend the competitions. It's really fun. There's a leaderboard, there's confetti, you can make it um, whatever topics you want. Um, and then also there's um, a couple things out on our blog as well as um, different ways you can use us. Um, there's clickable images that you can do. Um, those are really fun. Word clouds are also pretty fun to kind of just have a different type of pull everywhere activity type to try out. And the words change when you, and it's very motion um, activated and it's pretty rad. Um, so there's a couple things, but I definitely recommend competitions for any sort of like game or activity. Um, Great, and I'll, I got a few, I'll tackle next to uh, awesome. number one, this recording will be available on our blog. Uh, so you'll be able to play this, this over again as many times as you wish. Uh, and then how secure is the student registration information? Is it used for any other data collection other than for just you? Uh, it is extremely secure. We have various certificates um, that allow us to connect with Blackboard and Canvas and a variety of other uh, platforms. This data will not be collected for any other purpose than for what you're using it for. It will not be resold. Uh, all of that is 100% it's, it's, uh, secure there. Um, I can take a couple of more questions as well. Um, there's one question about, are you changing anything about your pricing plans due to the COVID-19 crisis? For example, some companies are adding features to the free subscriptions. So right now, the one, um, the thing that we are offering um, to affected educators is that we have a 90-day free premium plan available, and you can sign up to, um, for that from our homepage if you're an affected educator throughout all of this. Um, and then uh, if we change anything else, we'll definitely communicate it. Um, 
and then there's a question about how do you recommend using Poll Everywhere in virtual all hands meetings looking for suggestions for types of questions. Um, so I recommend um, there's a couple different questions you can do. You can do what would you like to celebrate this week? Um, what questions do you have? What's one thing you'd like to change? You can, uh, depends on the topic and the size of the uh, size of the all hands meeting, but you can leave it as open ended as you'd like for anyone to ask anything or you can kind of um, narrow it down to the specific topic that you're looking for. Um, and then can you share the game or competition you're using? Um, it just depends on the topic and we come up with a bunch of different trivia unrelated to um, unrelated to anything. It's just competition, like typical trivia out in the world. Um, we have some blog posts on our blog with some suggestions of trivia questions you can use. They're pretty, some are topical, some are more general, but um, there's a couple different posts on our blog that you can get some questions from. Is there a way for registered participants and a team to participate in teams competition? Uh, currently looking for students to add from half of the group. The best mean for that, the most effective mean is just to, with that the group of students who are part of a team, having a single individual uh, designated as the responder and just um, uh, feeding responses to said person. That is the, the quickest way and the way that other organizations with a similar setup are currently uh, doing this. Um, there's also a question about how do you filter responses for large audiences? Um, we want to do a word cloud question, but are hoping to limit inappropriate answers. We have moderation and filtering options on some of our plans, um, which help um, which help corral that and help um, minimize any sort of uh, chance for that. So I definitely recommend looking into that as well. And to dig deeper into that, the levels of moderation, you can set it so that any curse word has asterisks, any curse word is completely removed, any emoticon is removed. Uh, you can moderate yourself so that every question has to go through you first or every word cloud has to go through you first. And if you have our Teams feature, you can uh, have one of your coworkers be the one who's moderating while you present this. So multiple ways in which to moderate to make sure that nothing inappropriate or nothing off topic is presented to the entire company. Um, there's also a couple of questions about some um, questions people have had about using our PowerPoint integration. Um, I definitely recommend reaching out to support. They are, they are our PowerPoint experts um, and they're able to kind of help you walk through any sort of like lag issues or any sort of issues you may be having. Um, so I definitely recommend emailing them um, and they'd be more than happy to help. Excellent. And then there's a question about asynchronous uh, presentations. We do have the ability to have you respond asynchronously. However, it's set to only certain activities and you'll be able to, to uh, share the link that allows for asynchronous presentations. Uh, when you're creating the activity, if you look on the right side, you'll see uh, one that says configure, then test, then present. You click present and then right there will be explanations on how to set up this asynchronous uh, response. Um, there's a question here about what's the maximum audience size for Poll Ev. Does Poll Ev have the ability to pre-upload a list and have people log in and verify it against this list before they participate in the poll? Participate in the poll? Two different questions. So I'll tackle the first one, which is what is the maximum 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 audience size for Poll Ev? Um, depending on your plan, um, all of our paid retail plans are 700 um, responses per poll, uh, so you can have up to 700 people participate. Um, our free plans um, are a bit smaller than that. And then um, if you're looking for a larger, like one time event with more than 700 responses, we have options for that as well. Um, and then you can pre upload a list um, and restrict to register and have them register so that only people that are registered participants can participate in the poll as well. And then the question about if you got if, if your team, if you don't have teams enabled, what are the best practices to manage other colleagues presentations? Uh, that's a case-by-case -case basis. The companies that we found who have done this best have uh, sort of, it's a second layer underneath the admin who manage all presentations and are, who are the ones assigning out what presentations to use, really making it so that you minimize the number of people who are creating presentations and who have the ability to, to share these presentations so that you're able to really limit 
who see what, who sees what, who presents what, therefore keeping that unified message that your team is trying to, your team is trying to have while you are presenting. Awesome. And then there's a clarifying question of does 700 responses mean 700 people or 700 responses? Uh, it means 700 responses. So if you do have a word cloud where um, seven or 100 people all submit seven responses to that word cloud, you would hit the 700 responses limit. Um, it's highly unlikely that would probably happen. Um, seven, you, usually with 700 responses, it covers most of the use cases there. Um, but if you have any questions uh, to definitely reach out to our support team about that. You've like Courtney, there's a question about uh, Zoom Live. If, if you do a Zoom Live with students, can you have them visible and do a poll live presentation at the same time? That's gonna be a limitation of Zoom. I know when you present stuff on Zoom, you can still see a set number of people on the side of your screen and you're able to set how many people it is within a certain parameter. So uh, any limitations there would be with, with Zoom's UI and, and not uh, poll live. Yep. Awesome. Um, I think that's all of the big questions here. Um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to um, our support team uh, and they'd be happy to help you. But um, thank you all of thank you all of you for joining today. Um, there was a lot of great questions and hopefully we were able to kind of give you some ideas and some new workflows to try. Yep, thank you everyone so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Awesome. Bye everyone.